ever gone on a bike packing trip where you found yourself unable to stop cycling at the end of the day? Where your curiosity takes over and you can't wait to find out what's around the other corner? Where the summer nights are endless and the midnight sun helps you to guide your way forward? If you haven't experienced this, you need to book a trip to Arctic Norway. A normal day on a bikepacking trip for me starts with making up some kind of a general plan for the day. What I want to stop and experience along the road and how far I want to go until I call it a day. Luckily here in Norway where camping options are almost endless, I rarely have to decide where I want to pitch my tent at the end of the day in the morning and rather make it up as I go. Filming these videos do add a fair amount of time every day. Setting up the camera for those ride-by shots and then cycling back to get the camera is a time-consuming activity. But I think it adds a bit of variation to the videos and makes them a bit more dynamic, so I think it's worth it in the end. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I woke up accompanied by the midges and mosquitoes that seemed to get trapped underneath the rainfly of my tent during the night. So I mercifully let them out of their misery by detaching the rainfly from the tent. Looking over the nearby fjord I realized just how amazing this part of the world is for bikepacking. Just to be able to set up your tent for free, only to wake up with a great view like this every morning. Welcome to a brand new day here in Arctic Norway. And the first goal of today is to make it to Tromsø, which is about 30 kilometers away from here. But those are not easy 30 kilometers. I've just checked the altitude chart and we gotta make a big climb in able to get there. So we're in for a rough start today. It's already about 25 degrees so it's gonna get hot climbing over this mountain. When will this hill end? <laughs> It took me about two and a half hours to get over the mountain pass and reach Tromsø. The trip between Lofoten Islands and Tromsø is a very popular bike tour since it's fairly flat and most people can make it within a week's time. 
the number of bike packers and bike tours are steadily increasing in this destination and you'll meet many interesting people along the way. Cycling over the bridge to Tromsø would also mark the end of the last couple of days of island hopping. I now rejoined the mainland again and would stay on it almost until the end up in the North Cape. I just barely made it to the suburbs of Tromsø and I made a stop here at a general store to buy a travel kit with a sleeping mask and some earplugs. So hopefully my sleep will improve now further on. Tromsø is located about 350 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. It's considered the northernmost city in the world and would act as the halfway point of my trip toward the North Cape. When I'm on a bike tour I try to look for things to experience where I don't have to leave my bike unattended for a long period of time. And entering Tromsø I found a place like that right away. The Arctic Alpine Botanical Garden. With free admission plus the possibility to bring along your bike inside of the park this attraction seemed too good to be true. And I spent a lovely time walking around and observing the arctic flowers and plants. So if you're ever to do a tour here in Norway, you really gotta try this out. It's called Kesam Vanilli. I think in Sweden we call it Kvari and in Germany it's called Quark. But outside of those countries it's not widely known. <laughs> it's basically sort of like a yogurt, but they've taken out all the sweets and added a bunch of protein instead. So it's really good for you. And, uh, it's great to fill up your body when you're out on a tough day like today when you gotta climb all these hills. So what I usually do is just mix in a couple of banana bits in this and eat it. it tastes like a dessert basically. Just after having lunch I realized that I had stayed way too long at the botanical garden and really had to make a move on if I wanted to catch the ferries coming up later in the afternoon. So sadly I had to skip out on visiting the spectacular Arctic Cathedral just outside of the city center and continue my way east. But thankfully the road that was coming up over the next couple of hours was extremely scenic with Alps shooting up of the fjords. So I quickly forgot about missing out on the cathedral. I eventually made it onto the first ferry that would take me over the narrow fjord in about 20 minutes time. Whew. So 
So I barely made it onto this ferry with just a couple of minutes to spare. And there are more ferries going later this evening, but the reason why I wanted to catch this one is because there's even another ferry in 22 kilometers and of course they time everything after the cars. The cars have maybe half an hour to drive those 22 kilometers but for me it's gonna take maybe one and a half hours. That's why I need to catch this early ferry in order to get to the second ferry and make that even later tonight. So this day is basically one of those days where you just have to make deadlines all the time and catch ferries. But now I should have about two hours before the next one goes, so 22 kilometers in two hours should be doable. <laughs> So I just got off the second ferry and I wasn't able to film anything because going on these ferries means a lot of things you have to be able to do during that half an hour or so. So I charged my electronics, I took a shave in the bathroom and talked to some other bike tourists that were on the same ferry. I'm already 115 kilometers into this day but I think I'm gonna continue on in an hour more so because I have this fantastic tailwind. It's kind of hard to put up a tent here both due to the wind and it's very sloping downward so I'm looking for a flatter place where it's a bit more sheltered up against the road here so I'm gonna carry on for a while. After the last ferry of the day I managed to ride for a couple of hours in the everlasting sunset. Accompanied by the majestic Lingen Alps on the other side of the fjord. I sometimes felt like I needed to pinch myself that I was actually cycling here experiencing all this beauty. And I never seemed to want to stop for the evening. Finally, late in the evening, I finally decided to call it quits and found a wild camping spot. Perhaps not as stunning as the previous ones, but it would be enough for me for this night. Look at these guys, 
these horse flies were from my camp spot last night and I knew I had a, maybe three or four inside of my tent when I folded it down but I couldn't get them out and they're still alive <laughs> there's one there's also one here's one as well so far on this trip I'd been extremely lucky with the weather but all this was to come to a change the next day it was time to experience some typical Norwegian weather and fittingly enough that rain would find me just as I was about to climb over the largest mountain pass of the trip. Find out all about how that unfolds in the next installment in this series. Until then, have a good one.